Okay, my camera gave out on me because uh, I ran out of that luxury stuff they call space. Alright, so far we got that brooder done and ready and it's getting hot in here. I got all the heating and all the pads set up. I gotta wipe down all the water and food things and get that right. So yeah, so it didn't record but 30 minutes of our conversation, Mandy. Oh, wow. So they didn't get any of the stuff you were talking about, all the quail and... Working on and doing this and doing that with them. Alright, this was a real tiny little piece. I can put some cardboard behind that one. But it's really tiny. Yeah, and since right now you're using your pad. Yeah. I was going to go ahead. You know what? Let me go ahead and get that metal to do it right.
Yeah, it's a freaking grammar. What were you doing? I had to go cut the wire. First I had to oh. find my snips. So you want to talk more about the quail since no one heard you the first time? <laughs> what makes our quail better than anyone else's quail? That's why we did 2,000 uh, eggs. Yep. And in the 2,000 hatching eggs, we're going to have not only those, but 20 different plumage colors. Uh, some of them are quite rare, like black or ginger. Um, yes, yeah, some of those eggs were amazing. Huh? Some of those eggs were amazing looking. Yeah. And then we also have Celadon, which are our blue laid, laid eggs. And those can come in any color plumage as well. Um, and yeah, we're going to be breeding like the conformity, which is the shape of the bird, the size of the bird, and the color of its feathers, and then the temperament. And ultimately, we look a haven able to handle any of these things. That's uh, the key. It's a proven temperament. One that can be trusted with your family. Not only is it healthy yeah. for your family, as in the eggs and the meat, but the, the contact. We want it to be healthy and perfect. Exactly. They don't perpetuate any um, aggressive bloodline. Now, those uh, are the ones uh, that we're going to release into the wild. And, uh, a lot of places will focus on one or two different types. We're, we're going to be attempting to have all the different colors and the variants that haven't happened in the uh, you're breaking up, man. You're breaking up with us, man. I didn't hear the last thing you said. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to have to go back and listen to the last one. I guess like one of the things we were talking about last time that didn't get recorded was like the Pharaoh line trying to breed in as pure of a line as possible without having other genetic, you know, manipulations in it. Like brown sexually, it's almost every single Pharaoh line in the United States. Um, so breeding that out is going to take multiple, multiple generations, and we're, we're probably one of the few mom and pop uh, countries able to do massive breedings like that where we can be so selective. Um, but we're, we're going to be working on our MPIP in the spring, so right now we're just supporting our local Mississippi community. And, um, with our jumbos, we'll work on breeding bigger and stronger jumbos, looking at their legs, making sure that they can support the weight they're on, that they're growing to a weight that is healthy, um, not too, too big, but um, big fast enough where you're not spending lots of extra on feed, and that it's not affecting their egg hatch rate. So that's kind of our focus on the jumbos. Um, 
and then with the celadons, it's free, uh, free through blue. Uh, what is that in? What do you mean by so that? You can ask. So having a celadon line means that the third will go blue. Tuxedos. Um, so it'd be cool to see if we can make like a black celadon, you know, or a ginger celadon. And I don't think they exist right now in our population. I'm excited that we have a bunch of plans. Yeah, it's, it's going to be fun. It'll be interesting to take out, go through and take out the best birds and then see how they improve them with every generation, you know. Um, we can slowly breed our standards up to the max size before they hit the jumbo and not affect their egg hatching rate. And then we could exceed the jumbo threshold and create ju jumbos in every color line as well as the one. So there's a lot of different options for us to do, uh, depending on which path we want to go down. Um, some farms prefer jumbo, they're a little less work when it comes to like, you get a little more meat off the bird. Um, they do produce a little less eggs, so that's kind of the trade-off for that size of meat. But the eggs are bigger though. But they do eat more, they eat more and they take up a little more space than a standard. So there are advantages to having just standard birds as well because they don't eat nearly as much as jumbos and they do more eggs. They're nearly an egg a day. So um Ooh, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm so young. I'm excited. I've been sick the last week, y'all have to get me. <laughs> I'm excited that you're excited. I dropped my pack somewhere. Got it all cut perfectly and then I dropped it. Where did it go? I don't know. Somewhere that I can see. When we got this from, they said that the mice did this in a storage. They probably had a little bit of chicken poop left or something. But who knows? Mice eat anything. They just eat plastic just to eat it. That's how fires are started every year. Okay, she said it should be in the room or the bathroom or by the tent in the yard. She did not find any doors there, so they all have to be there. Any what? Have more cloth. Huh? 
Uh, she said she didn't find any what there? Any more doors. She found all the doors. It's a face. Five. We're not missing a door, we're missing the feeding face. Yeah, she said she does have more troughs. She'll get them out of the doors. There's not a trough, it's, said, a, it's uh, the feeding face. Feeding face. The PVC, the, 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 whatever this material is. Is it a metal, like the metal thing that comes down over the feeder? No, it's a plexiglass stuff. It's the plexiglass that the feeder's going in. The plexiglass like face, the glass. side. Do you know how there's four sides? Two of them hold, yeah. one holds the water, one holds the food. It's one of those, the food one. A pixie glass that holds food? That holds the food tray. Come on, man, you know what I'm talking about, don't right. you? Think about it. There's four no, sides. I don't. Four sides of plexiglass. glass. See how this is a side? Yeah. It's the other side. The one that the food tray hooks onto. Oh, uh, you're missing that pipe glass. Yeah. Not the actual doors. Man, these things tore up this thing. There's like eight or different eight different spots they ate into. Yep, she said they had left food in the in there so the mice just went to it. Probably had poop, poop in there. Poop on the tray, you know? On the face of it or something. Yeah. They like eating that shit. Great. Trying that oxygen? Yeah, no, nah, I will. I only do that when I got a migraine. Okay. Because that's what it helps for. I don't know if it helps just for headaches. Usually I got the fan on when I'm in here. I get that air filtration system going. I mean, we got that one going right here. I got my damn mask on my head. I don't know why I'm complaining. I'm looking for it. Oh, oh dang, it's on my head.
I gotta get out of here and take a break. Alright, brother. My head is. 